So uh, I'm Arlen Vanderwada. We have a dairy in Merced here in California. Uh, we milk 3,200 cows. And so the reason we got into the beef breeding was we wanted to have less heifers. Um, about two years ago, we met with our semen company and uh, yeah, came up with a plan to try to get down to about 2,200 heifers for a 3,200 cow dairy. We figured we're most efficient when we have about a 30% coal rate, and that was going to be about the number that we wanted. So um, we talked about it, and we decided that uh, we went with genomics and came to the point of we'll just breed Angus, because that was when all the Angus burgers and all that were in McDonald's, and we figured that's pretty easy to get rid of and not too hard to market. So. Um, what we ended up doing was we took our genomic numbers, we breed our top 60% of our heifers uh, to sex semen, try to get our next generation out of them as much as possible. Um, bottom 40% and top 50% of the cows are bred conventional semen, and then the top, bottom 50% of our cows are bred to Angus. So we're about 17 months into it. We have gotten about 1,600 Angus calves out of it, and um, yeah, Grimius has been uh, picking the s semen for us, and then they're currently buying the Angus back at about six and a half to seven months old, 550 pounds. Um, we bank on three pounds a day of gain off these animals once they get back to our place, and they've easily converted that uh, no matter what time of year it is. So we're very, very happy with having less animals hopefully better animals, and turning over the animals in about seven months. Go ahead. My name is Jack Pirtle, and I have a dairy in Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, right now we're milking about 3,000 uh, head. And I was approached uh, with a guy um, nine months ago about breeding Wagyu. Um, to him, he said he has a market for the finished product, the Wagyu Holstein Cross, straight to Japan. Um, we actually, I had one due today, uh, my first Wagyu calf, so I haven't seen any yet. Um, and in our our area, you know, we had the Angus guys kind of come by, beat the bushes, uh, wanting us to try the, the Angus. Uh, my neighbor bred Angus, and, and the guy's gone. Um, so he was, he was promised so much uh, money over the current, uh, day old uh, beef calf price and you know he's gone this guy I called him up the other day told him okay we're about a week away um, and his deal with me was a hundred dollars over uh, the the market price of the bull calf that day so our our beef calves right now day old are hundred eighty dollars so I should be getting two hundred eighty dollars uh, for every Wagyu calf and for every Wagyu uh, heifer it's seventy five dollars over market price Uh, we haven't heard any negative feedback. I mean, we've been running them through, uh, most of ours have been going through a calf ranch in Texas Panhandle, and uh, they they say they're easier to deal with, uh, at least in terms of health. I don't mean to be avoiding the question here. Um, they're much easier to deal with than straight dairy cattle as far as keeping them healthy and alive. And no, no negative feedback. And they come back to our own feed yards and um, yeah, there's there's no problem with docility. We've on the you know there's some stigma out there with limousine that's because the first limousine that come over from France back in the late '60s, early '70s, you know I'll be honest, they had some docility, they had some docility problems. Uh, limousine breed was the first beef breed by about ten years to uh, implement a docility EPD. And we've put about, uh, we've been selecting uh, four docile cattle for nearly 30 years now. I actually think we have them bred quieter than most Angus bloodlines. We get ours back at about four and a half months from the calf ranch, and they average about 340. Would that be the same for the... That's, a, that's an Angus Holstein cross. Um, our Holsteins are coming back same age, about 310. Yeah. 
like I said, once they get back, we they gain three pounds a day, almost guaranteed. <clears throat> yeah, and our, our data would be limousine jerseys versus straight Holsteins, because we do run straight Holsteins. And they would come, the same days would come in about 20, 30 pounds lighter. Um, how that compares, they, they're, you know, the few straight Jersey bull calves we have run through a calf ranch, you know, they would be significantly heavier, you know, 50 to 60 pounds heavier, but still lighter, still a little bit lighter than a Holstein calf. And then the, on, the, on the feed yard side, once we buy, buy those calves, you know, we take them all the way to 1,400, so we're, we're efficiently making 1,400 pound steers out of 1,100, 1,150 pound Jersey cows. Uh, we're, we're most interested in, in feed to gain. We say there's three things that move the needle on, on margin, and that's health, keeping them alive, uh, feed conversion, and then what kind of carcass they, they hang up. Ours was we just, basically we needed a breed, and Angus was really popular at the time. Um, we, we're dairymen, we're not beef marketing at all, so we just wanted something that we knew we'd be able to market somewhere. And so we went with Angus. Um, yeah, like I said, we're very happy with that. The market is extremely strong right now, and yeah. It's, it worked out well. We don't, if it, something comes up that seems to be easier to market, we may change, but um, I don't think we'll ever go back to breeding everything to Holstein either. You know, the, some of these Angus guys came by promising, like I said before, um, $100, $50 over market. Uh, so this guy came and, you know, I, I just trusted what he told me that he was going to uh, fulfill, you know, what he told me that he was going to give me $100 over the day old market. Uh, and then also, you know, I think this is kind of a startup deal. You know, he hadn't had anybody else in our area do it. I think he only has one guy in California doing it. Um, but he was also needing somebody to raise it. And I, I do have some extra feed uh, that I don't feed to my own cattle that I sell to my neighbors. So I felt it would be an opportunity to create another market for some of the leftover barley silage and car uh, corn silage that I produce, uh, another animal that I could run it through. Uh, I did finish 120 Holstein steers up to 1,300 pounds. Uh, how much, what is a 1,300-pound limousine Holstein worth? You mean I, on a dollars per head? Yeah, if, yeah. Yeah, a couple thousand. A couple thousand. So, you know, my Holstein steers, I got paid $1.20 a pound at my scale at 1,300 pounds. So they're, they're worth quite a bit more than that, the limousines. Right now. Right. Well, this was like two weeks ago. Market's taken off in the last, yeah, yeah. probably about right. And, yeah. I'm going to tell you, the Wagyu are very expensive, from what I understand. Yeah. Uh, Full-blood <laughs> Wagyu? Full-blood Wagyus are very Right. This, and, you know, so this guy, I don't ever own these, these calves. Uh, the guy pays me uh, the day they're born. I'm going to custom raise them for him up to six, eight hundred. And what he does with that, with them after that, I don't know. Um, I do have three Wagyu bulls that, I, that I've got, one with my heifers, one with my cows, and then my neighbor has one. And they're really, really tame, really docile. Um, what do you guys do with the, the heifer calves, the limousine heifer calves? Uh, they're also going through the feed yard. They are. Yep. yep. Uh, Angus said the same. They're, they're going right with the bulls. Yep. They don't, through the system. They don't convert. They grade uh, equally as well as... as uh, as the steers, and we're able to flip 100% of them into beef carcasses. So if, if we send cattle to the packer and they get graded a dairy, they have a beef carcass grade and a dairy carcass grade. If they get graded a dairy carcass grade, we automatically go $6 back of the regular market. So the first steers we sold to Tyson, they says, we're gonna run these on our dairy grid, and if they're beef, we'll flip them into beef. And I said, being a beef man, I said, no, we're gonna run them on our beef grid. And uh, uh, we, we've, we've really wowed Tyson that we've been able to flip them, you know, almost 100% other than an odd one here and there. You know, and, that, and don't forget there's what, um, what Arlen and Jack are doing, and that's 
that's probably an avenue. I mean, the Angus are noted for marbling and quality, and, and, and Wagyu is even higher yet. There's two ways to add value to a carcass is quality and red meat yield. You know, you, put, you just put more pounds of, of meat in the box. But then the other part of the equation is efficiency in the feed yard. I would think you would be able to. They're just like a regular Angus to us. Um, we're very aggressive with how we feed them, trying to get them up to the size that uh, we're trying to sell them at. So that's why we keep them in a yard and feed them uh, fairly high quality feed still to get them up to that size. We have the feed, so we use it. I think they'd be just as efficient on grass as they would be in, in the yard. So. We'll be able to better answer that question uh, eight months from now. We're going to experiment with it this summer with, with uh, beef builders, limousine jerseys. I would be concerned about turning any Holstein cross out on grass. Here's the way it works. Uh, a steer gets fat when he reaches the weight of his mother if with like kind genetics. And we need to market about 14, uh, 1,450 pounds steers or we start getting discounted for heavyweight carcasses. So with a small Jersey cow, we're trying to take her weight and find the right breed to cross her to pull it up. Holstein's, um, you know, you, you'd all know better than I do, what do Holstein cows weigh? Uh, yeah, 16, 15, 14, 1800, somewhere in there yeah, usually. Yeah, I think uh, the number we use is closer to 1600. So, I mean, you start turning them calves out on grass and put too much frame on them, it might be a challenge to get them fat before they get too big. In New Mexico, we hadn't seen grass in like eight years. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't, have, we don't have that problem. California, we don't have rain, so. <laughs> We don't have that problem either, don't worry. <laughs> On the limousine side, we've had, uh, I got Adam, my partner in the crowd, what do we have, 10,000 calves? Or have we had over 10,000 calves born already in our own dairies? And we're running, the numbers are right at 98.7% unassisted calving. And our guy, sorry, our guys in our dairy said we'll try this once, but if there's calving difficulty, this thing's dead, and, and uh, it's only ramped up since we've implemented. The wagyu, I think, is a smaller breed. Like I said, my my first wagyu calf was due today, um, but I'm pretty sure the the Cavanese is going to be uh, pretty good with those. And you're right on the Angus; they're very That's simple. Small. They they're born smaller than a Holstein, so they come right out, and it's all cows for us we might get one out of every 400 heifers that has an angus in it but <clears throat> they're all cows so you don't expect too many problems yes and people ask me if there's a difference in conception and i say that's hard to answer because once the cows get to four breedings they go automatically to angus so our tough breeders are getting all the Angus breedings over and over again, so their numbers look worse than what they probably are, but I consider them about the same on conception rates. And, and we're doing the same thing. We're doing like the fourth, fourth, fifth service. I did switch uh, a month ago to third, third, fourth service on heifers as well, which you don't have very many of those, no. you know, but we are doing sex semen on our first service uh, heifers to generate the, the, um, the heifers that we are losing to the Wagyu. In our own dairies, we're, we're using all AI. <clears throat> Excuse me. We, we do sell bulls. Uh, we sell about 500 bulls a year, and we have sold bulls to dairies that buy all the replacements and are just turning limousine or Limflex bulls out on, on dairy cows. We send bulls to New York, uh, down to Iowa, and different parts of the country. Uh, um, we be very few. Pretty much, uh, we wouldn't have bred enough heifers that I could even speak to using them on heifers. We do have some Cavanese lines, though, that we could sure try it. You know, I, 
on the beef side, we, we don't have any trouble. Of the continental breeds, um, like compared to other European breeds, Charlet, Simital, Galvi, Limousine are finer boned. Limousine would be that limousine have bone more like an Angus, but then they're heavier muscle cattle. So they are the they are the easiest calving breed of the continental breeds. Like I said, we do very little. Um, our whole program was designed to get genetic improvement as fast as possible. So our heifers should be our better genetic animals. So we're trying not to get Angus out of them because we want those genetics to continue. But um, like I said, the Angus calves are smaller, so that the calving ease should be there for any uh, any heifer that would ha would have one. But those heifers are also a lot older, so they shouldn't have any problems anyways. In our in our valley, um, you know, the dairy industry is still struggling. We still have guys going out. Um, my main business was selling corn silage, barley silage uh, to the dairies that moved there in um, the early 1990, uh, late 1980s. Um, so, you know, I'm looking at it as trying to generate another, another animal that I can feed my feed to without having to maybe buy another dairy. Um, you know, I got 3,000 cows now. I don't know if I want 6,000 cows uh, <coughs> dairy in. So I'm going to start bringing it to my heifers to try to generate uh, more animals. And whether I stay with Wagyu or if I try Angus or I try Limousine, uh, I think I'm going to, I'm going to move forward and, and produce some more beef and less milk cows. Uh, we think so. I mean, we hoping that sex semen gets better uh, going forward. If it gets better at all, it'll it'll, it'll work. But right now, with the, kind of the 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 woes that come with sex semen, it's it's probably a wash at best. I've got a neighbor that's doing some embryo transplants, and he's putting Angus 100% Angus calves in in his Holstein cows, and I don't know what that costs. It costs more than the semen. It costs a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> you're breeding for milk compared to, you're raising for milk compared to beef, so you're feeding a little bit differently. But um, as an Angus, uh, we figure we're making about <clears throat> 250 to 300 bucks a head um, at 550 pounds so we're turning over every seven months 250 bucks a head if you want to raise a springer it's probably going to be a lot more like 300 bucks a head over two years so the value is we think is turning it over quicker and getting that three times in two years is our goal but yeah you're, you're feeding them differently and you're Goals are different for each one of those things, right? I think that's a good way to put it. No, and, and that value would be, I would say, all of that on the Jersey side. I mean, the, the thing that we found is there's not a lot of data on straight Jerseys. You know, I'm not even sure where they go, you know, but uh, we're, we're finding a good home for them. <laughs> and really adding value. You know, I think the lowest hanging fruit in the dairy industry is adding value to that Jersey bull calf. And, uh, and then what, what these guys, my hat's off to what these guys are doing with Holsteins because uh, that they too can, can play the same game. But, you know, our, our little comparison that we did there at University of Minnesota, I mean, we put on a hundred, with one cross, we put on another 190 pounds of carcass weight, and, and carcass weight is, is bringing uh, well over $2 a pound today. So, I mean, right there you've got somewhere between four and $500. Our, our day-old Jersey calves, there's not very many Jersey guys where we are, but they're worth uh, easily half of what a Holstein uh, day old. Right now, my day old Holsteins are 180. I don't think a Jersey bull calf. I don't know that he, the guy picking up, would give you 50 bucks for it. Yeah, 
Yeah, our, our model is on the dairy side is no different than the beef side. So we sell genetics and we're interested mm. if if the our customer that's buying those genetics wants to sell those calves back, we want to be there to buy them. So uh, we, we buy, we'd like to buy day olds. We're setting up relationships with calf ranches in different parts of the United States, different regions. Uh, working with selected calf ranches that we're getting these calves delivered to. Or if someone's retaining ownership through the calf ranch, we're interested in buying them, like Arlen selling them as, as five weights or four weights or three weights, whatever weight coming out of the calf ranch. And, and both uh, Holstein crosses and, and Jersey crosses. And yes, there is a premium offered for uh, the beef cross animals. It obviously is going to vary depending on where you are, but we have been offered a premium for those certain crosses as day olds. Um, since we have the feed, we raise them, and we think we make more money raising them up to 550. But that is an option. We've been offered 75, but I told you what we think we make per head. So since we have the feed, we're going to raise them. <coughs> we're offering uh, we're offering Holstein bull calf price, day old price in a, in a given region for a Jersey bull calf and then we're $50 back on a heifer calf and we, we don't want to go any lower than $75 on a bull calf and, and $50 on a heifer calf on a low market and then on the Holstein side we're offering $75 over on a Holstein price on a Holstein cross and $50 over on a heifer calf you know, whether this, this beef market stays like it is, I mean, I, I can see this premium even going up from here. Um, the market will dictate that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't look for it to get wider because we're short of cattle. I mean, there's feedlots and packers want beef cattle. I want fed cattle, I'm sorry, whether they're beef or dairy cattle. There's just challenges with dairy cattle and we're never gonna get dairy a dairy get a packer to pay for a dairy carcass what they will for a beef carcass. You know, they're um, they're they got less cutability and they got narrower ribeyes. And the other challenge that comes with straight bred dairy cattle is we try and fix them with technology, and these cattle feeders are, are putting a lot of technology at, and I'm talking aggressive implant programs, hormone implants, and then beta agonists. Uh, Zilmax is now off the market, but prior to Zilmax going off, and now they're using Optiflex, which is a, is a muscle repartitioning agent. I mean, that works. That'll, that'll put more product in these cattle, um, consumers don't like it. It comes with their challenges. Uh, you got more dark cutters and more more discounted cattle when you start using that technology. We think fixing it with genetics is is the optimum answer because we can get by with a lot less technology. We then minimize our carcass discounts and we improve the deficiencies that are there in in and dairy cattle with complementary crossbreeding. And you would think that, so I'm gonna use limousine because that's where our experience is, but in terms of red meat yield and feed conversion, let's use them two traits. That's what dairy cattle are, are deficient at. Here's a limousine and here's a jersey. You would think it would be halfway, you would improve it to the halfway point. You don't, you get like way up here. A, a lot closer limousine, so I think what happens is we're crossing complete opposites. So we take heterosis and just really engage, you know, we, we see heterosis at its max, capitalizing on hybrid vigor. It's an experiment we're about to perform. And, and not us, but we have had a few producers that have asked to buy some for beef replacements. But I, I don't, I can't show you any data to say if it works. My blink is, is they'll milk too much. We don't need that much milk in a beef cow. 
you know, we just need enough milk to raise a calf for 150 to 180 days and wean off a five, 600 pound calf. Uh, 